Good evening, you lucky people. Um, this is kind of weird and a bit uncomfortable to talk about, and it shouldn't be because failure is a natural part of life. But it's I'm not really insecure about much, but like my education. As some of you know or may not know, I'm currently at Newcastle University and I'm studying medical science. Um, and that is fine. It's going well. But it's not really what I had intended to do originally. Um, I got five rejections last year. So four medicine courses and one like your backup course which you're meant to be able to get into. I didn't I just thought I'd talk a wee bit about that because I know it's a really stressful time and I can't really imagine what it's like for people doing it now, like with less support from school and the uncertainty of like coronavirus and stuff, it must be difficult. So I just thought I would throw my two cents in and just hope that someone finds it useful. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. So I thought I'd start off by talking about kind of my journey um, because it's a bit weird and like how I decided on doing what I wanted to do. So all my life I was, all my life, <laughs> since I was a child, for like most of my teenage years anyway, I was like I'm going to be an English teacher, I'm going to go to Cambridge, study English because like Cambridge is so cool. I mean, I would be academically pushed, and some days I'm like, oh yeah, I wish I was. But a disclaimer is that I always, for some reason, was like predicted straight A's, and then I'd get my exam results in August, and it'd be like I'd miss it by like a grade. So obviously, this happened like in the important year, which for People from Scotland is kind of fifth year, your hires are the most important. So that happened then and I was like, great. So I'm not good enough for Cambridge. And maybe English just wasn't the right course for me, which I don't know if that was stupid. But it was how it felt at the time and I just kind of felt like I had to try something completely different. So I got to sixth year, my last year of school, and I was like, right. I like physics. Physics was a subject in fifth year. I thought I was gonna miss the grade in. I got an A, took it to advanced higher, and I thought, it's this for me. And so with that in mind, I you know, applied to all my courses. At this point, I got five offers. So I decided to go for the University of Glasgow. I was doing theoretical physics, which I'm not actually sure what it is. I think it's like lots of maths and computing. Not my thing. Around the time though that I'd left school, I started thinking that maybe medicine was something I could do. And obviously with a science degree, I knew that I could go on and study medicine after I'd done physics anyway. So I was like, cool, that's gonna work out for me. It didn't, obviously, but that kind of desire to do medicine was there. And so about halfway through my first year of physics, I started getting work experience. Because I thought, I'm doing physics, but I'm still obviously going to need that um, experience. I got to the end of first year. I'd had a horrific year, 2019 was bad. And I dropped out, basically. People don't like but when I say I'm a dropout, but technically I am. I got a certificate, passed all my courses, but I dropped out essentially. So I remember my mum and I were going to Florida in August 2019. And basically I said, I'm going to apply for medicine. So I was working on my application when I was in Florida. I was studying for my UCAT exam on the plane both ways. <laughs> And I applied. Spoiler alert, didn't get in. 
I've told you that. I applied to St Andrews, Glasgow, Manchester and St George's University of London for medicine and my backup choice was neuroscience at Edinburgh. Five rejections. So luckily by February when UCAS Extra opened UCAS Extra is like when you don't get an offer or you don't like any of your offers basically you go and they have like a big list of courses basically that you can apply for and there was courses at other universities I liked but I thought Newcastle has this course it's three years I've been to Newcastle I like it that'll do and basically here we are we're sorry the number you have dialed is not in service at this time Basically, like I said, my grades were good. They were not excellent. And generally, if you want to go into like medicine at a standard entry point, you need to be like really good. Um, I guess for two of my courses, I had absolutely zero chance. So Manchester and St George's, not a chance. <laughs> um, I think they needed more advanced tires than I had or something, you know, and it was something like that. Um, Glasgow had said, I emailed them before, they were like, yeah, apply, you seem to like tick boxes, go for it. That didn't even work, didn't get an interview at St Andrews, it was pretty much the same. So, yeah, grades. <laughs> Grades were the thing. Another thing was obviously, like I said, my UCAT, which is the admissions test for medicine. So kind of like the BMAT or the ELAT or the LMAT, that kind of thing. But for medicine, <clears throat> um, I didn't do badly. I did score above average. So my score itself wasn't the problem. But you need to set a situational judgment test. And basically that's like situations that you might face as a doctor, if I remember correctly. It was a while ago. And you need to like say how you would respond to that situation. It's not like there's a right answer, but there's like answers they would prefer. And obviously as you answer them, it kind of builds up a picture of how you would respond. And basically it scored like band one, two, three, four. So one is like, the best, like that's what you want. Band four, you're pretty much taken out of a, a lot of, like if you get band four and the school considers that part of the application, you are finished, like it's bad. I got band three, so that was okay for a lot of places. I don't think it was okay for like the places I applied to. And basically what that means is that your answers differ quite a bit from what they wanted but not to the extent that that would exclude you basically so it was bad but had other parts of my application been stronger it might redeemed me from that band three but they weren't we're sorry the number you have dialed is not in service at this time i think the first point to make is you'll have gathered this you'll think i'm bad or whatever but I did not deserve to get into medicine when I first applied. I didn't have the experience, I was at quite a bad point in my life. I had rushed it when people, other people applying had obviously been thinking about this for years before and I thought about medicine once when I was younger, probably about 14 and I was like I want to maybe do psychiatry and I looked into it and I found out that you actually you had to go to medical school and I went oh I'm not the sort of person that goes to medical school so I didn't bother. Apart from that it never really crossed my mind to do it until I was like I need to go back to university next year well, what on earth am I going to do? I'll do medicine. Um, so I did not deserve to get in and I rolled my hands up and accept that. It's really cringy as well, but it's true that sometimes it's just not the right time for you, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with 
accepting that things aren't meant to be at certain points in your life and it's not a fate thing, it's just a, you know, like you know within yourself when something's right and I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I wanted to do something that would give me security and maybe I will end up doing medicine but like it, me at 19 applying for medicine still felt just too young and like I said that I need a couple more years before I could really commit to something like that and that's kind of another point as well like I feel like there's kind of pressure to have achieved certain things by a certain time so I had it in my head that I had to get in to medicine this time round or that was my life finished and obviously it's not. I'm 20, 21 in March so really thinking about it that's young. You know like you feel old when things are happening and you're like oh, I'm getting so old my life's nearly over. You're like well no and respect to like the rest of your life 20 is nothing. You don't have to achieve everything that you want to achieve in your life right now. And here's another thought that medicine is an expensive degree to do. If I'd stayed in Scotland it wouldn't have been. But it is and I'd rather, like I think medicine is for me, but with the degree I'm doing right now I'll graduate and have a lot more options if that makes sense. Which people will be like, well not really, but it, in the sense of you know, when I look at the things I want to achieve, it's not all medical related. And I think, well, I could graduate, take a couple of years and go to medical school and still be relatively young. I could graduate and decide I don't really fancy that, but I've still got a degree. And I just think, really, in this economy anyway, you just you want more options for your life and I think what I'm doing now will certainly give me that. Who wants me? I want to leave you with some advice that I have learned from my situation. If you're rejected, then you have options. Like, your life is not over. <laughs> you know, so if you're rejected, I'd say you can do like three things. You can take a gap year and reapply and work on like you can ask for feedback, they won't always give you it, but ask for where you went wrong and work on that in your gap year. But also enjoy yourself because you're going to do a really intense thing and, you know, it's just worth living a wee bit first as well. You can do what I'm doing and you could, you know, go on and do biomedical science or biochemistry or something in that realm or something completely different and then apply as a graduate and there are specific courses for that and the last thing you can do right and people won't like me saying this but you can evaluate if this course is actually for you you can ask like have i been like applying for the right reasons have i i don't know is this what i want to spend the rest of my life doing is this something i'm good at if the answer is yes then see one of the two above options and if not then you're in a really good position to try something new. So, win-win. I hope this has been somewhat informative and helpful. I just feel like it's something I try not to think about a lot because it makes me so uncomfortable, the idea of failure. <laughs> but equally, without failure, you can't grow. So I'll leave that with you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Set.